Welcome to Law Sessions. I am Jennifer Housen. In this law session, we will focus on the civil justice system and certainly we will look at the background of uh, the civil justice system in the UK. We will see what was considered uh, bad about it or indeed what was uh, the concerns about it. We will look at uh, uh, Lord Wolfe's reforms. We will then see uh, what the critics have had to say about it and we will of course look at it uh, 10 years on. Now then, if we go back to the beginning or as uh, far back as we can in terms of looking at reforms, well the road to reform, if we can put a, a particular pin at the point where we would consider this, in 1988 there was a civil justice review and in that review it was shown that about 90 to 95 percent of litigants actually settled out of court. So we're talking about civil matters here. It also showed that the majority of the settlements were below the value that the lit litigants would have received had they proceeded with the trial. Now, what you also had was there was this uninformed and unfair settlements, which were of course a consequence of imbalance in relation to the po position of the parties because it may very well be that you had, for example, a company making a settlement with an individual and of course the person would have no choice but to settle a dispute out of court. There was no consideration for cost efficiency and the time between, for example, the statement of claim, which is of course the claim form and uh, suing someone effectively, and the hearing, the time lapse was extremely long. There was also this emphasis on oral evidence as opposed to written evidence. And when you look at the Courts and Legal Services Act of 1990, it provided for the redistribution of cases between the county court and the high court. Now, when you look at certain commentary, for example, uh, and when you look at the principles of civil procedure, we see that there is, uh, well, Neil Andrews uh, writing on the principles of civil procedure. He says that there was this domination by lawyers in respect of the court system and there was this technicality of procedure which meant that for the layman going in, it was a little difficult. Now, there was also the idea that litigation moved almost at a snail's pace and there was an extraordinary high cost and all of this was really based on this adversarial nature of the way that our civil justice was conducted in the UK. Now then, when you look at the civil justice and this initial foray into reform, there seems to be that there are some basic assumptions that we need to question. And G.L. Davis writing in the Civil Law Quarterly in January 2006 said that the common law system assumes certain things about resolving civil disputes and he says it is these assumptions that lead to the problems of cost, complexity, delay, inequality as it relates uh, between the litigants. Now, he says there is an assumption that the best way of resolving a dispute is by a contest between competing adversaries, which is of course the adversarial system. He says that this assumption leads of course to this adversary nature of the proceedings and it actually distorts the factual situations as well as opinions. It is this approach to uh, civil justice that made the litigation expensive and somewhat unfair. It also means that when you consider the adversarial system, it takes on the assumption that both parties are equal when it comes to uh, their resources and their ability to defend in court. It is on the backdrop of that that we get Lord Wolfe's report, Access to Justice, of course, uh, being presented, and the idea is that it looked at the principles. It, looked, it identified a number of principles which the civil justice system should meet in order to ensure that there is access to justice by all. Well, he said the system should first 
Be just in the result it delivers. He said it should be fair in the way it treats litigants. He said it should offer appropriate procedures at a reasonable cost and it should deal with cases fairly and with reasonable speed. He also said that it needs to be understandable to the people who are using it and it should be responsive to the needs of those who use it. Additionally, he said it should provide as much certainty as the nature of the particular case allows and it should be effective, it should be adequately resourced and it should be organized. Now, it's all very well and good to change something or seek to change something and talk about uh, what's wrong with it. It's easy to criticize. But one of the things that we will see is when you look, for example, at uh, uh, Michael Zander, Professor Michael Zander, as well as uh, Hazel Jen, we see their criticisms of what the Wolf reforms or the Access to Justice report has presented because it talks about uh, ensuring that people understand the system. That assumes that persons are using the system. Now, what was never given was any empirical evidence to suggest that there is this huge number, for example, of litigants in person who come to the courts or, or anything like that. It just seemed to have been that the, the, the system was laborious, it was uh, slow, and so there were these other uh, criticisms which were considered in the round. Now, this, of course, once Lord Wolf has looked at all of these and considered, well, this is what's wrong with the system, we have a problem. Because the defects which Lord Wolf identified in the present system, based on what he considered that the system should do, he said that when you look at the system, it was too expensive because costs often exceeded the value of the claim. Now, what we're going to see is that based on some of these supposed defects, it has not actually been cured at all. If anything, it's actually or suggested that it's been made worse because this whole uh, issue of it being expensive, we will see that now what is called front-end cost appears arguably to have made the whole system a little bit more expensive. So it's too expensive. It is too slow in bringing cases to a conclusion. It is unequal because there's a lack of equality between the powerful wealthy litigant and the under-resourced litigant. It is too uncertain because the difficulty of forecasting what litigation will cost and how long it will last therefore induces the fear of the unknown. We also see this criticism of it being incomprehensible, uh, too fragmented in the way it is organized, as there is no one with clear overall responsibility as it relates to the administration of justice, and again the idea that it is way too adversarial, and as such uh, it was not helping the parties or the courts. What then were his basic reforms? Well, Lord Wolf said, a system is needed where the courts are responsible for the management of cases. And one of the things we have seen is that, yes, case management, based on uh, Lord Wolf's suggestions for reform, does seem to have been one of the things that really have, has been addressed. Now, the courts, he said, should decide what procedures are suitable for each case. The court should set realistic timetables and also ensure that the procedures and the timetables are complied with. Now, one of the problems, of course, previously was that the timetable tended to be driven by lawyers. I am on the one side for the defendant. There's someone for the plaintiff. I can't come to court today. It gets put off. Next year, in he, can't come, he, he cannot come to court. It gets put off. And it goes on like this for two, three, five years. There is something uh, there's a case which hasn't really been dealt with. Now, defended cases, he said, should be allocated to one of three tracks. A small claims a jurisdiction, and he sets a financial limit for that. A new fast track for straightforward cases up to a certain limit and above the small claims amount, which had limited procedures, which had a fixed timetable and fixed costs. And then a third track called a multi-track for cases above a certain amount which provided individuals 
uh, with kind of hands-on management from the judicial team. And this would have, of course, be reserved for the heaviest cases and standard or tailor-made directions uh, would be made where they were appropriate. Now, Lord Wilson Choir was also asked to produce a single, simpler procedural code which would apply to civil litigation in the High Court and the County Court. Because before, what you had was you had a system in the High Court and a system in the County Court. So you had the white book, which was a big, heavy white book, which was used for the rules in relation to matters going to the High Court. And then you had the green book, which was, again, a thick, heavy book dealing with procedures in the County Court. And the idea was to make a single code to apply to both areas. Now, the final report was accompanied by a draft of the general rules, which would form the core of the new code. So based on the back of those reforms, what we get is Lord Wolf and his new landscape. Now, Lord Wolf said that if his recommendations are implemented, the landscape of civil litigation will be fundamentally different from what it was then. The new landscape, he said, would have certain features. First, litigation will be avoided wherever possible. Now, the point is, and we will see later on, what Hazel Jen has to say about alternative dispute resolution. But one of the big driving forces of Lord Wolf's reform was this idea of ADR. So litigation should be avoided. People will be encouraged to start court proceedings to resolve disputes only as a last resort and after using other means more appropriate when available. Secondly, he said litigation will be less adversarial and more cooperative. There will be an expectation of openness and cooperation between parties from the outset, supported by pre-litigation protocols on disclosure and experts. And we've seen an awful lot of what are called pre-action protocols. So basically, if you're going to bring an action in relation to certain aspects of litigation, there is a procedure which you must comply with. So for example, judicial review, there are certain things you must do in advance. Now, litigation will be less complex, he said. I'm not sure he's achieved that one. There, he said, would be a single set of rules applying to the high court and the county court. The rules, he said, will be simpler. The time scale of litigator, litigation will be shorter and more certain. That does seem to have taken root because now you get the courts setting the timetable and more or less it's been adhered, it, adhered to in the vast majority of cases. All cases, he said, will progress to trial in accordance with a timetable which is set by the court and monitored by the court. The cost of litigation was also addressed and he said what this will do now is to make it more predictable, more proportionate. There'll be fixed costs for cases on the fast track. There'll be estimates of costs for the multi-track. And of course, parties of limited financial means will be able to conduct lit litigation on more or less an equal footing. Now, he said litigants who are not legally represented will be able to get more help from advice services and from the courts, and there will be clear lines of judicial and administrative responsibility for the civil justice system. Now, he said that when you look at the structure of the courts and the deployment of judges, they will be designed to meet the needs of litigants, and heavier and more complex civil cases will be concentrated at trial centers which have the resources which it needs and the specialist judges which it also needs. Now, when you look at the deployment of judges, that would be according to these new rules. And equally, when you look at the civil justice system, he said it would be more responsive to the needs uh, insofar as uh, the litigants were concerned. So that is what Lord Wolf set us up for. We're going to take a short break. And what I want us to uh, consider when we come back is uh, what the Wolf reforms uh, actually meant in practice and certainly we will look at uh, the criticisms and how it has panned out uh, since it has been implemented. <music> 